Hi guys, so today um, we're going to take a look at the uh, Ultimate Crafters Companion Pro, I guess, or you want to call it Crafters Companion Ultimate Pro, or the Ultimate, basically when it came out with Ultimate, I think now they call it Ultimate Pro, I'm not sure. But this is a tool that Crafters Companion put out probably a decade ago or so and um and then right now they just had a sale on it for their you know 14th anniversary or whatever so they were having sales on all the boards and the pros so i thought you know what we should just make a little video and then someone had requested that anyway so i thought that was kind of funny so let me show you so okay before i don't even remember where i bought mine the first one i think i might have got it at michael's but maybe at a scrapbook expo i don't know i, I really don't remember but if you buy it at michael's or joann's which i don't even think michael's carries it anymore they might I don't know it looks like this this one i actually <laughs> mine first you know it came wrapped up like this i actually bought this off of offer up for 20 bucks from somebody because i wanted the plates that were in it so i have three as you can see so this one <laughs> it's heavy and so what their whole thing is that um well this is the deluxe kit it comes with the two ulti boards for boxes and bags but you can score with this tool you can fold Obviously you can fold, I don't know why it says fold. Uh, I guess it's just go and trim and then you can do embossing and it also has like a little area where you can make bows. You can make envelopes, you can make boxes, you can make cards obviously. Um, there's just a lot of things. So I'm surprised it didn't say that in the front. That's kind of not the best uh, advertising there, but you know, they're showing all these things and it comes with a DVD. So I'm gonna show you what the basic thing looks like, but it's really big when you lay it out. So I didn't want to rearrange things on my own table in my craft room for this, but um, but I just wanted to go over that. They do sell DVDs, and I don't know why I bought these, because you can pretty much see a lot of this stuff online now on YouTube. They just kind of release the little videos. So, But I think they sell these for like $15 each or something. On their website, you can find my HSN for cheaper, maybe get a coupon. Um, so this is the Ulti boxes and then the Ulti cards, just because it's the ultimate craft company, so they call them Ulti. But it has, you know, lots of different things. I do have the Sweet Treats one, which is really cute, and I don't know where I put it. I'm looking for it. I'm like, I can see it, like, in my mind. <laughs> I always see it, but, you know, I moved, and who knows where that DVD is. I don't know why it wasn't with these guys, but these guys were easily found. I was just like, where are the other ones? Because Sweet Treats is cute. It prints out the paper, just like I showed you guys how to use your, well, kind of how to use it. Um, the discs that come with magazines that nobody ever uses so i was like hey let's try them out and they, they're really cute so really cute uh, papers that are on that if you have the sweet treats one which i do know hsn carries right now you can buy the whole ultimate with the sweet treats uh, boards and the um, dvd and the sweet treats dvd which is just kind of like to print out papers um for like over 50 bucks sometimes i have it for 40 bucks sometimes even cheaper so that's pretty much why i have the sweet treats one from hsn because i think i got it for super cheap otherwise I don't need this many, but they always go on sale super, like, really low, so it depends on the boards, if you want to buy the boards separately, and, but I mean by boards, it's these things. They're just these plastic, hard plastic boards that have embossing, the, the embossing board. So, like, this one has the heart and the oval on one side, and on the other side it has, like, a little treat box, and then it has other things that you can emboss. Um, so, basically, like, this is the top of your box, you can just not trace that, and instead trace, like, the little flower and cut that out or trace the butterfly part so that when you put the box together it looks like a butterfly on top instead of looking like a heart on top or a little flower so that's kind of cute this one's a fun one it has a lot of different ways to use it but let's look at the ultimate <clears throat> i'm gonna put this other one to the side and oh i do want to show you one thing they have these little rubber grips and on crafting companions website you can order pretty much everything um if you need it, right? You need another scoring tool, you lost it, or the little cutter, you lost it. They sell everything but these things. So I did lose one somewhere along the way. So obviously it's gonna make it kind of wobbly, but not too bad. I'm so sorry, I had to sneeze. Okay, so I believe this is the one that they call the sweet treats because it came with these two boards. So it came with the milk carton. And I know it's hard to tell and hard to see. And some of them you have to cut certain things or not trace it on the second one because you have to do two of them to make a whole box. So you really have to watch the DVDs, um, that information. And this one makes a little purse. Hope you can kind of see that. So basically I think the purse latches with these things in the middle. <clears throat> you know, I'm not sure if this is a Sweet Treats one. This one might not be the Sweet Treats package, but I'm just showing you these different boards. So this one has another little purse. And this one's actually cuter because this one's more simple. The whole purse you can do on one piece of paper is probably a 12 by 12. Or eight and a half by 11 it looks like it might be okay so it has the one side of the purse the middle section and then the opposite side so um what's cute here too though is that you see this one's opposite it's different 
So if you want to do a little scallop purse, you do that, you trace it, you trace this middle part, but when you go to trace this other side, turn your paper around and then line it up again and then go ahead and trace the scallop side again. That way both sides of your purse are scalloped and this one has a smooth side. And then this one has a little envelope. It looks like a gusseted envelope, I don't know if you can tell what's going on here. It's kind of like a little open, I guess you can probably put a little ribbon in there. So it's kind of like a purse, but not really. So this might be having to do with purses. I just got thrown off with the milk carton. And how am I gonna lay this out? Well, let me just show you. So on this side, it looks like a little suitcase. You have the stuff to make your um, envelopes or an envelope box. So if you want it to be like an envelope that's a little bit thicker, you have two ga gauges here. It's like a step down, and that's kind of what helps you make it a little bit thicker. So that if you have a thicker card, your envelope is a little bit thick. Um, I believe you can also use this for your boxes, but we'll talk about that in a minute. That might be on the inside. So on this side is where you're gonna what you're gonna use to fold your cards, anything that, you know. So it has, this is for embossing, like if you want a little wavy embossing or something like that. But we have the gatefold, half US letter, gatefold US letter, trifold US letter, half fold, half US letter, uh, half fold US letter, and on the other side it has different, you know, half fold, 12 by 12. So if you have a 12 by 12 piece of paper, you can butt it up against here and you mark it, it'll be folded at six inches, basically. Trifold for a 12 by 12 and a half fold for eight by six is right here. A gate fold 12 by 12. And then it has a, you know, your little, another little scalloped edge or whatever, if you want to trace something like that. Okay. So I thought that was a good place to reset the camera because we're going to open this guy up. So it has a little clip here. You just take that clip off. And when you open it up, <laughs> there's um, storage areas here and in here. Okay. So if you open it and let's say if I'm pushing it open, see how this plate is still kind of in the middle here. And if I open this up, everything that's in there is going to fall out. So I always forget about that. I just want to make that mentioned. So uh, there are little finger areas. So like if you wanted to open it, you can get it easily. But for right now, what we want to do is open it up so that this whole section, see how I'm opening it? So this piece is going with this piece and this piece is going on this other side. So look, nothing fell out, right? <laughs> Yay, <laughs> because that's half the battle most of the time. Everything falls out, you just have to rearrange it. But on the inside of the board, let me turn it around just so it looks, so it makes a little more sense. This lighting is so crazy because this board is super purple, but it's more like a magenta purple on here. I see it's like weird purple, like a lavendery purple. But anyway, maybe it'll show up better on the <laughs> when I edit it. So here what you have is um, embossing boards basically. Uh, I'll show you a couple of different ways to use this uh, later in the video because I'm gonna show you how to make a quick card. The same one Sarah always shows, but she does it so quickly so sometimes people wanna slow it down. So on this side, embossing boards, you can use this to help you make like an aperture and that's why it has like these little dashes. That's the middle of your card basically. So we'll talk about that in a minute. And on this side, yeah, this is the box side. I haven't used this in a while, so I couldn't remember. So on the outside you have your enveloper basically, and then you have your card um, sizes. And this is box base at the top. So if you're gonna make a box, you're gonna use these numbers and these um, score marks to help you with that for the base. And then this is your box lid. And even though I turned this upside down because I wanted the butterfly to be right side up, I would probably work it with the box lid side up first and then box base, turn it around because that's just how it would make sense to me. But we have their sizes in inches and in centimeters. Um, then that's just for not really any reason. <laughs> I don't know why it has that, but it's there. And then some more embossing if you want to emboss like on a card or an envelope or something. So if we open this side, this side is pretty much just storage. And what's in here, yes, are my sweet treat boxes. Okay, so again, this is the milk carton. The other one was a milk carton, but it had a handle on the other board. So this one's a little bit different. Milk carton, it has little tags you can trace. It has a smaller milk carton, so maybe we'll try that out just to make it quicker. On this other side, it has like a takeout box. And on this one, um, you can use two pieces of eight and a half by 11 paper is what I remember from what she was saying, or one piece of 12 by 12, you have to line it up just right. So basically you're gonna trace all this and then you're gonna turn it so that you can trace one more of this side, right? For what's missing here. And then here we have the popcorn box, which is really cute, small. And then basically you're gonna trace all of this. And then for the second one, you only have to trace this top part 
you don't have to trace this bottom part, but if you want it to be there for reinforcement, just trace the inner box part, the inner square, okay? But obviously you have to do this twice. And maybe I'll do videos separately on each thing. Um, this is for your little birdhouse. Okay, so this also makes a popcorn box, but it also can make a birdhouse. So if you want it in the top to be scalloped, you do that and you cut that. If you want it to be straight, you would do that. If you want it to be a little birdhouse, don't really score this line. Score everything else. But when you get to this top part, don't score it. But then line up what you did score here and do your birdhouse, the top part of it. So maybe I'll do a separate video on that. It's kind of confusing. And this one's a cute box. Oh, I wanted to try this one today. Um, we'll see. Uh, this one is like a little to-go box too. It's cuter for like a gift because it's going to make a good size box. And then yeah, this outer area is what makes the box. This inner part is what makes like a little decoration if you want like a matte and layer basically for that. So those are sweet treats boxes. But in here you can store your plates, right? I think you can store like maybe three or four. I've done quite a few. But I'm going to turn this over and close that up. I'm going to open it back up from the middle, all right? Because if not, this stuff that was in here would fall right out. And now when you open this side, you have some of the other tools. Now, when they first came out with this, I think it was a good idea. I think now things are so different. Obviously, it's a decade old. Um, you know, maybe you don't need something like this or you have better items, obviously. But this is kind of a fun to go thing. I've used it a handful of times, to be honest. Um, but for boxes and stuff like that, why not? But she also sells now scoring boards that are just for boxes or envelopes. I actually have the envelope box uh, over there, but I'll talk about that in a minute. They always come with the same book. The book has not upgraded or changed. It's the, the same, exactly the same. Um, but it runs through how to do all these different things. The DVD, this is your basic DVD, not like the ones I paid for over there. Um, but it'll show you how to use everything in here. So there's that. Um, you know, a little storage. It's mostly for the stuff that's in here. You have your scoring tools. And this is basically like the one that comes with any scoring board that they sell now. This one's a little bit different. This is more for the embossing, so it's a smaller rounded edge, and this one has a larger rounded edge. And this one's even smaller, so there's three different sizes of heads, which is nice. And your scoring tool. But usually you just use one of these smaller ones for the scoring anyway. This little guy is your cutter. Now I haven't used this one, so it's all tucked away. So what you're supposed to do is open it up. And hopefully I don't bust the nail here. You just push that open and it's gonna have a box cutter inside, right? So see how it has like little holes, like little divots that'll hold it. So all you're gonna do is take that out, move it to the one over, and now it's exposed, right? That pointy part is sticking out. Close it up and this is gonna be your cutter. And look how small it is that barely sticks out, but that's what's gonna do it. I'm gonna leave it sticking out because we're gonna use that in a second. These little things, there's three of them, are your bow maker. And I'll show you where you're supposed to use those in a second. And I think first all I want to do is cut some paper for you guys because this is your ruler to cut paper. I have tried using this before and I don't know if you can see how it moves. Um, it's not the most accurate thing in the world, okay? But let's go ahead and close this back up. Let me get the paper cutter. And we'll talk about the, um, well, you know, I'm going to keep one. I'm actually going to keep all these out because I'll use them in a second, possibly. So you're going to keep this open all the way open, right? Because it can kind of go like this, kind of shift. You want it flat. And I probably should flatten it a little more without this placement underneath. This guy has like a, this part needs to be up on top. And this little section that has like the same shape, you just pop down in the middle. Right? But you can still see how this moves. That's not preferable. Let me go get some paper and I'll show you how it cuts. And then we will start making a card and using the boards. Okay, guys, we're going to try this out. Now, I am going to turn this around even though I turned it around before. <laughs> because the centimeter marks are up here, the inch marks are down here, and I don't want to, I guess I can still cut upwards, that's fine. We'll just leave it the way it is. So we have inch marks down here, that's what these rulers are for, it's for your paper cutter. So I'm hopefully gonna do just a half of a US letter, right, the A2 standard paper. So basically we're gonna open this up, just pick up that piece, and that means you're gonna line it up with five and a half, right? Because just right in the half, or in the middle, we have five and a half. I'm gonna hold this here, and I'm standing up, so maybe if I was sitting down in front of it, I'd have a little more control, but we're gonna take this guy. And so this little area is supposed to fall in between this track. So just place it there. And cut right down. And it kind of stopped here, so it stopped short of actually cutting the paper for me. So maybe we should move the paper up a little bit, but uh, I hate to, I'm just gonna give it a little tear, but just maybe line it up and then move it up a little bit because this thing is obviously gonna block from going to the very end, which is 
not good. <laughs> but anyway, so I mean, does it look straight? Let's see, let's line up both of them together. I can see that this one's quarter inch taller. Do you see that? Uh, why? I don't know. I lined it up with five and a half inch. <laughs> And that's what happened. So ah, this is kind of the reason I was telling you guys that, uh, you know, as far as the cutter, it's not my favorite thing, but, and I don't even know which one of these is right now. Let's see. Uh, there's another ruler on here. So let me see if I can kind of, this one is five and a half, it says. And this one's shorter than five and a half. So for whatever reason, <laughs> I don't know. But that doesn't seem right. Something must be off on here. But okay, so we have that cut. And we actually needed both of them. I'm still gonna use it even though it's a little bit smaller, but that's okay, so I'll use that one for the inside. So I was gonna show you is how to make a pop-out card, but kind of like a, a, they don't call it, well, they do call it a pop-out card, but it's really just a card with a little dangling uh, item in there. They have this called jump up cards, which I think is really fun. You have to do all this stuff. So when you fold it up, when someone opens it, it kind of, oh, like you can put different decorations in here that'll open up. But anyway, all right. So what we have to do is close this to the side. Right, close this up. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use these. Uh, I'll just turn it this way. We're gonna use what it says half fold. This is gate. I'm sorry. Uh, we're over here half fold half US letter because if you were just using US letter some big size That's fine, but we're doing half fold of a half of a US letter, right? Because it's a half piece and suppose this is going to work and we will see I'll take my scoring tool the one that has the you can use that edge or this edge I'm just gonna use the rounded edge and Again half fold half US letter is what this line says and it's basically this line right here and that should perfectly fold your card in half. And it did, it did a good job. It has a little, a little lip, but to be honest with the card, that's kind of what you want. Um, that'll be the front, so that the person can open it without fudging too much with the other stuff. So that's not bad. And I'm gonna do it again with the small inner one, remember? <laughs> Even though it should be the same size, but we're gonna do it again with this one. Again, half fold, half US letter. And with this one, even though in the book it says to, uh, to use the accordion fold lines, there's no line here that says accordion fold, so I don't know why it says that, but you're gonna use gate fold half US letter. So I'm gonna mark this one too, okay? And then we're gonna turn our paper around and do half fold, sorry, gate fold half US letter again. And then we are going to go ahead and fold so if this was another card that you were just making and you wanted it to be a gatefold card, don't put this middle fold, right? Don't do the half fold, just do these outer ones. And then you have a gatefold card that's gonna fold perfectly right into the center. Do you see that? So that is really good. That's really great. Do not make this line. Just use the gatefold half US letter on either side, but not the middle one. But for this card, we're gonna use the middle one and everything because we're basically gonna fold it like this. If we can see that. What's gonna happen is we're gonna stick this in our card base like this. So when it opens up, that opens up, okay? And what we're gonna do is cut out a little hole in the center. Now you really wanna do a bigger card for this. I just wanted to go small, so I just made a standard card. But what you're gonna do is come over here. Now, I am gonna make a hole that looks like this, an opening that was kind of like Aladdin, kind of <laughs> very uh, nice look. It reminds me of like the windows um, that they use in there. And then I'm gonna cut out a butterfly, okay? Or actually, I'm gonna cut out two butterflies. But the instructions say on your card, if you're gonna come in here and you're gonna make an aperture, and then you're gonna make something that dangles in the aperture, it's the same, to trace this outer line, and that's what you're gonna cut out of your card, and then this inner part is what the shape you're gonna cut out if you want that to dangle in your card. But for me, I'm gonna use this shape and I'm gonna put the, hopefully the butterfly will dangle. We'll see, it might get stuck. I, I don't know, because like I said, it's a smaller card. So all you're gonna do here is take this part and see how it's kind of folded. You're gonna butt it up against this side or this side, wherever you're more comfortable. Actually, I should probably put it on this side so I don't get in front of your guys' face. So just butt it up against those little marks, kind of centered and then open up your card 
and you're gonna take your tool. I'm gonna take with a like medium sized one, and you can kind of see where this should go, and it just you can kind of feel it out. So I'm feeling that out. It stops here, so that's probably where I start going up. And this one's easy because the track just keeps you on there. The head of this, and look at that, it's already cut out that half. So now what I need to do is cut this with scissors, and I'll go grab my okay, scissors. So at this point, you just put your card back together, just flat, and you're gonna cut on the lines. Or, I guess you can cut on the inside or the outside. I don't know. I'm just going to cut down the middle. Is that weird? I don't know. <laughs> um, just choose where you're going to cut and then just stick to that, right? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go up. And you're just going to follow it. So the same thing with the butterfly shape or whatever shape. Obviously, do the best you can. It's not going to be perfect. Ooh, that one's a little different. I might use this side of the card because this side I cut just inside that little area, but you can probably flatten it out too. Okay, and if you wanted to emboss this, throw it through your you know embossing machine. However, that'd be really cute, and I think it'd be just another added item. So what we're gonna do is stick this here. But before we stick that together there, look how cute. Um, I'm going to make a butterfly, and I just picked out this green paper just so it stands out. So we're going to come up over here and I'm just going to place this on top. This will be a little bit harder because this time I don't know where the butterfly is really. I'm just going to have to feel this out. So where is it? Where is it? It starts like here. And just, it's a little bit harder because like I said, we have to find where it begins. But the track is such that it just goes. Does it go down here? Okay. You see that? Hopefully you get, and if you're tired of that or if you don't want to push against like I'm doing right now. See, I just went off the track. Um, just start up on the other side if it's easier for you to drag it down instead of pushing upwards like I am right now. It's pretty good. And I know there's like a little poke here, right? Yeah. Not bad. I mean, that didn't take too long. And again, if you want to trace on the outer side or the inside, however you want to trace this thing or cut it out, should I say. I'm just going to cut right on the divot that it made. And I'm just going to continue cutting this and I'll be right back. Okay guys, and remember I said I would cut out two? If I was smart, I would have just folded this in half and cut both of them out at the same time. But I didn't, <laughs> so I did one and one. So what we're gonna do now, and I'm gonna try to get a little bit closer, I don't know if it's gonna help. I'm just gonna put a string on this so it can dangle in that aperture, and I don't even know if it's gonna fit in the aperture, like I said. Oh, it will. Cute, okay. So I have the two different sides. They're not gonna be perfectly the same, and I wish I had just like I said, if I just fold it over my paper and cut them both out in the same line, that would be better. But it's close enough. Decorate it, glitter it, do whatever you like. You know, maybe not even, oh, maybe I shouldn't even glue them together. Maybe just in the center. That way they're kind of free to open up their little wings. That might be a cute idea. We'll see. Okay. So I just have some string from this little set. Um, I'll just pick one. Let's just do this lime green. I should probably pick one that's already been started. Actually, it wasn't hard to find. Okay. So, you don't need too much string because it just doesn't need that much. But, um, hopefully you can see that I'm laying that there. I'm just going to use this glue runner. This one, unfortunately, is a dot runner, but that's okay. I'm just going to put that in there, put my string, and if you wanted to stick them all together and not leave it open like I am, obviously put your tape or your glue. Probably a white glue would be better. And I'm just going to stick that down. Oh my gosh, that's cute. I do like that. We'll just leave it so that the wings can open up. But again, if you don't want that, just glue it all down. And now we have our little butterfly on a string. And what we're gonna do with these guys, now I brought whatever tape I had on my table, but you probably want to use something that's gonna work, that's gonna hold it really well. Um, I had low tack tape, but it's still pretty sticky. So I'm just gonna use a little piece of this because it's not even that wide opening, but you can use, it has to be something like tape because otherwise, it's gonna be hard to stick down that and not stick together, right? If you use a white glue, it's gonna stick whatever else you have on here down. Stick that down real well. Let's trim off this extra. I would do a better job of trimming off that extra. Let's see here. All right. Look at that. Okay, hopefully this works. Like I said, it's kind of a little bit bigger than I would want, but let's. it's gonna stick out of the card. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Okay. So on these, I'm just gonna put my tape on this piece, I'm holding it shut all the way. We're gonna put it against 
just one side. Ooh, this is a little harder to see. So I'm still in frame, okay. I remember this one's a little bit shorter for whatever reason than the card. So I'm just kind of centering that, <laughs> giving it like an eighth of an inch down there, an eighth of an inch up here. Look at that, it's already almost there. Let me back up a little bit because I think I'm too close. Oops, that's the wrong way. And on this side, we're going to put it down, put your tape just along that, the very edges, so that stays down nicely, and match it up. Now, see, that took a lot longer than when Sarah does it, because she's she has to zip, zip, zip through, especially on HSN. But look at that. Now we have our card. It's sticking out a little bit, because, of course, like I said, I went with a smaller card, and I went with a larger thing, but... That's really cute. And I guess I could adjust that with the length of the string. If I pulled it down just a little further, um, that part of the card wouldn't be sticking out. How cute is that? And of course you want to decorate, do whatever you want, front, all that. Very cute. So those are those things. Let's um, try to make one of the embossing board type projects and then we'll do the bows really quickly because that's a quick one and then anything else you guys have a question on I'll have to do a separate video because this is going on very long okay so I just closed it up and I'm gonna open it so I can get my boards here um I think I'm gonna do this one because it's not that hard to show so I think that's what we'll do and then anything else you know you guys can ask about for later I did want to show you that there are more areas out here even that you can cut you know a little heart out could have been in that aperture you can do a little star there's a butterfly you can do this rounded shape also for your apertures it's already cut in half or if you just wanted to even cut out a heart of a card you know it's kind of a heart size however you like these little areas here are like for your envelope like when you're done making your envelope you can go in here oh my goodness you know what I forgot I should probably do an envelope well, you know what? I'll quickly do an envelope before we get to the embossing board uh, that will go with this size card. Okay, so we have our envelope, envelope basically here. Um, I can show you what the envelope looks like, the one that goes all separately, because I have that here. Where is it? These are the envelope boxes that you can buy. So this is the envelope. And it basically looks the same as this, right? It's like the same thing. They just took that and put it into its own thing. So I've had this for a long time too. And then there's the top score multi-board, which is basically just like the other side of the board, right? And I didn't even realize that. Look at that. Even this. <laughs> it's exactly the same. It's just, I don't know. I had bought these separately and I didn't realize that. Hey, I already had that with my other stuff. And they call it the top score, I guess, and the enveloper. And that also came with its own instructions and its own boards. And I just keep it all together in my in one of these guys. Okay, so if you look this up, all you have to do is open up the book. Um, so there's envelope boxes if you need it to be a little bit wider, but just the regular envelope is here, and it gives you the sizes that you need. So um, for an A2 envelope, which holds your five and a half by four and a quarter card, you need eight and a quarter inch square piece of paper. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it on this because that's what we're supposed to be doing, right? Using this. So let's see what happens. Let's put our little guy back on here. Everything's fine. Eight and a quarter inches. So we have eight inches and we have a half inch mark. I have a quarter. I'm going to move it up just a little bit so I can actually cut through the whole thing. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, let's uh, just make sure this is nice and straight. That's all I'm trying to do. So that's about eight and a quarter. I think you should have, you should be sure that, like, oh yeah, that's eight and a quarter because of the way it did it, but. And again, it missed that last part. Oh, even if I moved it up. Let's just pretend. Okay, that'll be the part I cut off. So eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter, and then move it up, I guess, a little more than that. Which isn't really helpful, because by that time you can shift it. I mean, it might not even be where you want it anymore. But okay, whatever. Here, ooh, let's make sure it's still straight. Okay, that's how I cut all the way through. So suppose it is an eight and a quarter inch square paper. Sorry. Where is my instructions? I think it said lines D and F, but I have to count, I don't remember. Oh, come on, come on, come on. D and F. So, let's take our scoring tool. Now, 
I'm gonna put it all the way up against this ridge. There's another ridge, a little bit smaller, right? Lower, you see this one? What you can do with that one is if you're making an envelope box, because you need it to be a little thicker for a thick card, you're gonna mark your first, let's say D, right? We're supposed to do D and F. So here's D. And then you're gonna step it down and mark D again, okay? And that's gonna give you like a little, like an eighth of an inch separation between the two lines. So when you go to fold it, you're gonna have that thickness and that's gonna make your little thicker box. But we want D and then I'm gonna turn it to the next line. We're gonna do F on this one. Oopsie. F, F's also marked down here. The letters are also marked down here. I just don't like scoring backwards. Does that make sense? This time we're gonna do D again, which what I mean is like going up like this. I feel like that's weird, but that's fine. So D. F, D, F again. Turn to the last corner. And what I hope is that I told you guys the right ones. Let me just make sure. Yeah. So here we have that. And what you're going to do now is just cut the little, I think you guys have seen this probably so many times that you know what to do. You're just going to cut out all these little junctures here. And it might very well be possible that I just told you to do the wrong thing as far as the upper step and then the lower step, um, but I'm pretty sure it's right. You know what I'm saying? If you do the lower step, either way, your card's still gonna fit. So, but it's the higher step is what I thought. But now I think about it, that'd be kind of a pain. Why, why go up here when you can go down here and still use the things very well? But anyway, that's fine. And then we're just gonna crease on the lines. And of course you can lay this on your board and use your tool, your scoring tool, so it's nice and, Board. And I always like to put this on the outside, this bottom part. And you just put your tape real quick. Let's just do that. And of course you can corner around, you can do whatever you want. This piece can stay there. Sarah a lot of times just tucks it back. I like to just cut it off. So I just cut it off kind of straight, hopefully. <laughs> and there's your envelope. And if you wanted to, you could take it over here and just lay it here, the tip of your envelope, and then just trace a little heart. So now you have a little heart embossed on there. You can deboss it or emboss it. You can turn it over if you want it to be puffy on this side. And now this should fit my card, even though my card has that little character that's kind of sticking out there. It might not work for me right now, but hey, it pushes right in. Okay, so we have that. All right, envelope boxes. Not envelope boxes, what am I talking about? Uh, embossing boards. So you can turn this over. Now, you don't need this for the embossing board. You can buy the embossing boards and never have any of these things. Um, but what you're supposed to do, it has little notches, is just lay this there, as you can see. I'm gonna go grab some paper, because I didn't bring any, and we need to trace this two times. Now, I'm thinking if I trace it once and just cut it together, would that be better? I think that might be better. I'll okay, guys, you know what? I have eight and a half by 11 paper, and I didn't even try to test it. Ooh, nope. I need 12 inch papers, I think. Let me see. Because if this is on the outside of here, it fits here, even if it's at the very edge, it cuts off that one little thing that we need. But to be honest, let me see. I'm trying to think if I really, I think what I'm gonna do is add on a piece at the end because I don't want to go look for more paper right now. So you need a 12 by 12 piece of paper for this so it can catch that very little end. I bet you if you had uh, paper size UK, it would be fine because their paper is longer. It's just, not gonna hit this. So what I'm gonna do is just add on a little piece of tab later. So what we're gonna do right now is trace all of this, just this outer portion, this whole thing. Um, not that because we don't have it, but if we did, we trace that all the way down here. And then the scoring marks here too. This scoring mark, that scoring mark, right? So we can fold it right there. So let's try and get that done. I'm gonna. You can also stick this down if you wanted to with like that sticky spray, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna hold it. Now this one's easy to kind of get into, but if you remember it has a weird little hook right here, so you have to keep an eye out for that. Oh, it goes in like this for some reason. <laughs> and over here, it's already curving down. And then we're gonna have that little hook again. But you can always lift up your paper and see what you're doing just so that you're on the right track. Mmm, that doesn't feel like I'm in there. Here we go. Okay, it goes this way, and then what? Goes straight down here, 
and then up somehow. How far over does this thing go up? Oh, okay. It has like a little roundness. And then that tab area that we aren't going to get. That's going off. So you, you can kind of feel it out. So it's not too bad. Like that didn't take that long, did it? Let's see. This goes up here. Yes. Okay. So now the tab, the scoring for when we fold it. Here, here, here. Uh, up here, there's one. And then let's not forget, uh, where is that? The handle. Oh, is this moving around on me? I hope not. Right there. So here there's another intersection of another piece that's gonna score there and I keep falling into that divot. Try not to do that. So there's a little handle piece right here. I'm gonna show you. You're gonna use the outer hole. And then over here, there's another little piece of, right here, this little area. And you were using the outer, the larger one, right? And so what you can do is do this again, completely again. Oh, you know, it also folds here, doesn't it? All right. So there it is. That's our base. But what I'm saying is I'm just going to stack these two up and cut them both out at the same time. <laughs> Don't you think? Um... So I'm going to cut around all the edges, and when I come back, I'll show you how we're going to cut this center piece, and I'll probably have to go to my craft room for this, but that was for that. And then for this little piece right here that does like a mat that goes on the outer part, you're going to need two of this side and two of this side. And I just have this little Christmas paper I thought it would be cute to use, so let's try that out. I probably should have opened it. <laughs> all right. Um, I thought this one went the best with it, this one right here. So let's see how many of these we can get on one piece of paper. But I am going to put it face down just so that I don't mess with the pictures over here. Um, we're probably going to still need two whole pieces of this. And I will do it this way. Again, kind of eyeballing where we're at. And just holding this down as I move around. I'm trying to see where am I starting right here. And then this way. Nope. Oh, I went too far. Down there. Down here. Across. Oh, no. Where's the cross? And see how it kind of just slips away if you're not doing the right area? So that's kind of helpful. So it's just this inner part. And then it's going to have... Oh, actually, that was just a scoring line. I need to go all the way up here. There we go. Scoring line. Scoring line here. I'm using the small head, and to be honest, I probably should be using the medium-sized head because this one doesn't just glide as nicely. Supposedly, that one's glide, and they do. I mean, it was a lot better. Okay, so that's that one. I'm going to do the exact same thing to trace this inner one. And I'm going to cut out two of them. I'm just going to cut them out on the lines and I'll probably just match up this paper on top of another paper because it's very basic. And then I'll get everything else going. You do also need to do the little cutouts here. And you know what? Now that I think about it, oh darn it. On this one is the outer circle. And on the one that's, see it's the outer circle, the larger one. On this other one, I misspoke there guys. Do the inner circle, okay? So I'm going to put this back on there and do the inner circle because you want that little red to show through. Not, eh, I guess it could be the same size, but I'll go back and do the inner circle on both of these. Okay, the inner circle. Just real quick as I'm cutting this out, I just want to show you. I do have two pieces of paper together. I trimmed it one time or traced it once. And I'm holding it really tight so that nothing shifts, right? I don't want my papers to shift underneath so that they're exactly the same. But um, So that's what I'm doing with that. And then these other guys, I already have them all cut out. And basically, I cut them out again, two sheets together. I used the one that I had actually um, made my lines on over another piece of paper, and I cut it out. And then I took the one that didn't have any scoring, right? Because it was just an extra piece of paper that I put behind it. And I just lined it up where it needs to go, and I put the scoring marks that we need. Okay, so we're going to go into the craft room now to actually cut out these apertures, these little holes that we need to cut out um, with a craft knife. And then we'll assemble the box. Okay, guys, so we're here in my craft room. 
not that it's like you have to switch rooms just to use this tool, but um, what we're going to do is go ahead and use a craft knife, which I have, I'm not, you know, like the best at using those, and I don't even know where my craft knife is now that I'm looking around. I have several, and of course I can't spot even one. I know they're here. Let me see. So basically you're just going to cut around, you know, these little openings that you need. So for the the accent pieces, it's going to be the larger opening, right? And I'm sorry that I had misled you guys at the beginning there. And then on the um, box, it's going to be the inner openings. Oh, I have this one. This one's like the worst craft knife I have. It's <laughs> just one from Recollections. It was super cheap at Michael's. Be very careful. I'm going to do these one at a time. I'm not going to pair them up like I had when I first cut them out. And basically, you're just going to go around and do the best you can, right? To follow this area. If you have some kind of punch that would cut something out that you're happy with, to that will do this. I don't know what that would be, like an oval or maybe just a circle that would accommodate the little handle coming through there. Um, you know, feel free to use that. But otherwise, we're gonna do it by hand and then maybe just clean it up a little bit. Like I don't really like the way that's kind of choppy right there, so I'm just gonna come in and clean that up a little bit. And I'm doing it on the opposite side of the paper because it'll look nicer on this side. So if I was to do it on this side, it could maybe mess with the paper a little bit. And then we're also going to just fold everything where it has a fold line, okay? So I'm going to do the same thing for all of them. This handle, I'm going to cut all around in here and go ahead and um, fold these pieces. These pieces, the decorative pieces, are just going to fold in. And then this one's going to go out. But anyway, we'll fall talk about that in a minute. Um, and then our complete pieces here. Oh, I haven't done the uh, score marks on this one. On this one, I already marked it right because, oh, too bad, I didn't mean to. We're going to do the inner circle or handle and try to follow it. I'm already going crooked on this one, but try to follow it as well as you can and get that cut out too. Okay, guys, I have all my pieces here. Um, so we'll put these to the side for now. Um, so real quickly, as far as folding up this main piece, let me back up a little bit. Hopefully you don't hear the crow that's outside my window being super annoying. We're just gonna fold all these things in. Everything kind of folds in at the um, these pieces here. So if you had used a 12 by 12 piece of paper, you're not gonna, you're just gonna trace it and you're gonna have that little tab that holds your box together on the sides. But since I used a smaller piece of paper, I'm gonna have to do something about that. And then I totally cut this crooked. So I had a piece, the most obvious piece of tape in here, which I don't have to do that, but that's the tape I chose. It's okay. So we do need to stick a piece on here. If you guys remember when we traced it, there was like a little tab here. And so I measured that and it was um, about three inches. Yeah. So it's about three inches tall. So I just cut a piece of paper that's going to be three inches like by an inch. And I'm just going to fold this in half. Now, again, like I said, you know, if you had gotten a bigger piece of paper, like a 12 by 12, you don't need to do this. But I need to put something on here that's going to hold these pieces together. And... I'm gonna bevel this just a little bit so it's not in the way. What I mean by that, actually I'll hold it in half and just go like this. Just so that it's a little neater. Again, get yourself a 12 by 12 piece of paper. You don't have to mess with this or an A4 piece of paper. Uh, but I didn't, so I will have to do a little adjustment. And I want to use a tape runner. What is this? Is this a photo corner thing? What is this, blue dots? Blue dots are no good. Let me get um, an actual tape runner. How about this one? Is empty. I can never tell on this one how to use it. Let's see. You hear that? It's going, but nothing came out. I never know how to use this one. Let me go grab a different tape runner. Sorry, Sorry guys. That. So I'm just going to put a little glue in here. You can put it on the strip if you want better, but I'm just going to put it on there. And then we're going to add this little piece. Just kind of get it in there on that fold. I'm expecting a clarinet to arrive today. Dorian chose clarinet for band, and at his school they do not, you can rent one. I found a good price for a good quality one. But in the meantime, I ordered one for myself on eBay because I used to play clarinet, and it's coming in today, so I'm super excited. Um, okay, so we did that again. If you didn't, if you use a large piece of paper, you don't have to do this little extra, but I did. So what we're gonna do is now adhere our two pieces together. Obviously, wrong sides facing and the wrong sides are up because I can see it. You can do it right sides facing you, but always stick obviously the way one ends to the other, right? So either way, I have it right side facing now. That's fine. And so we're just going to eyeball that and stick those two together. And I've already done all of the creasing on everything. Now, as far as decorating them, do you want to stick these down now? 
You can do it now, you can do it after it's put together as a box. I'll just do it when it's all put together. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then we have to get, stick, obviously, this other end to this end here. So I'm gonna lay this down, put some glue on there. I would use a wet glue because I like wet glues better for boxes, but um, since we're just doing this real quickly, I don't want to wait for the glue. But if I were, you know, gonna give this away or whatever, I would definitely just use a wet glue so that we know it's gonna stay really well. So there's our box base. Let me back up just a little bit, and I'm so sorry about that lighting, but my tripod always puts a shadow. Um, okay, now maybe you've wondered, what are you supposed to do about this bottom? <laughs> So whenever Sarah's done this, she just measures it and then uh, cuts a piece to, to fit. And I believe when I measured it, it was three and a quarter, just over three and a quarter inches. I'm sorry, four and a quarter. Yes, four and a quarter by six and a half. And it's, it's just a little bit bigger than six and a half. So you can cut it however you like. Um, I'm, I already cut the piece of paper and I'm going to stick it to the outside, but if I were going to use this as a gift and give it to somebody, I would stick a piece of paper on the outside and I would cut another one and stick it on the inside. Only to reinforce that better, because I feel like if this is outside, if you put something in there, it might just push it away. You know what I'm saying? It'll push away the bottom paper. So I think if you trap these things between a piece of paper in here and a piece of paper underneath, you're going to be better off. And with this one, I am going to use a wet glue and because I want to have time to mess around with it if it's not right. Because if I stick this down and that glue runner just holds it, it, it might be um, not uh, where I wanted it, <laughs> right? Because your glue runner, that kind of glue is just going to hold on immediately. So I just kind of went around the edges. Somebody asked how do I put my glue down so that it doesn't seep everywhere. I try to use a thin bead and kind of flatten it out as I'm using it. And then not super close to the edge, right? So gives you a little time. So let me push this in here. And you can hold it and bring this on top. I'm gonna put it down, which is kind of weird, but I'm just gonna do it this way. And I'm eyeballing this corner over here so I kind of have an idea that I'm laying it where it needs to be at least. Okay. And then on the inside, I'm just gonna push down. This is so cute. Cute little box. Okay, I'm gonna hold this down until it's a little bit more dry and then we'll go ahead and do the embellishment of the outer paper. Okay, so that's the basic construction of the box. So if you didn't want to do an outer thing, all you have to do is bring your little handles together and pop them in here. And every time I've seen them do this, the box always pops open anyway, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how this uh, looks. I can't get the other handle in there, hold on. It's kind of pain to get them both in at the same time but anyway that's the the basic construction and so we're just going to glue on and I'm going to use a wet glue for this all our pieces so this basically this is going to go out here just going to glue it down and then the other two pieces on the other side and I'm going to use a wet glue and I probably don't shouldn't but um <laughs> because I want it to kind of stick on quickly but you know use whatever glue you like and we're just going to center that as much as I can. I'm trying to center it in the middle of this little whole thing, but at the same time out here too. It's pretty good for cutting it basically by hand after you trace it. Okay, so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to glue this front piece the same way and all four sides and I will be right back. Okay guys, so I'm just sticking down this last panel and I'm just, you know, kind of finessing it just to make sure because it does have a lot of folds that go this way and that way. You just want to kind of Make sure that this one is really in sync with the base, right? So that it's not kind of sticking out or anything. And this is still super wet, obviously, but look how much cuter it is with the little outside panel decoration. Really cute. Of course, you know, things like this, they take time. You know, it's still handmade because we had to trace it and all that and cut it out. So it's still gonna have some imperfections. I think what would be cute is if we did some, uh, what's that called? Um, sponging around the edges or inking you know to make the edge not as harsh because it might be that you can see that oh where you actually cut it like this is not the best job here <laughs> but um, I think if you inked it up it would make it less noticeable but look how cute that is and there it is our little box and like I said it's a good size so like I said it's about three and a half uh, three inches deep and uh, four and a half four and a quarter by six and a half inches uh, wide here so it's a it's a good size box so 
thanks for watching guys if you have any suggestions of other things you want to see from that ultimate let me know i will get to it um i was a little bit rusty using it like i said i bought it basically when she came out with it like about a decade ago and um and uh you know it's been a while but it's fun and if you're starting out in crafts you might like it you know it does have its different options on there built in it's cute you saw the little card that i'll have pictures for you guys but you can you know if you wanted the boards you can just get the boards by themselves you don't have to have the ultimate for them you can just put the board on your surface and work before on before i them, go so. sorry i did meant to mention the other little things that are on the same board like this strip i think it's supposed to be like a little um luggage tag you can just put around here right and then it has like little tags that you can decorate i'm not sure what the hearts are about but um this little treat it looks like a little candy is super cute i'm not sure the little mouth here the mustache you got um uh, other items you can decorate too it's just like a little tag so there's lots of things on here you can you know end up decorating with so really cute again i do love this one i want to try it out for you guys the little birdhouse but of course let I me know when i told you guys i'll make the bow and i'll do it because it's quick so real quick i did want to show you something um oh there's my mailman the magic ruler technique i think that's kind of funny because if you have something that's a weird shape and you want to make a box for it you can follow along with this and it's basically adding like an inch all around the item but um it's a really good uh tip but what we're gonna do is the bow making and all you're gonna do is get your little i was like putting things away i'm like oh no Okay, yeah, they're on this side. I'm gonna open this up. We have three pegs. You really only need two of the pegs. And the information is all in your book, so it's not like, um, you know, you're gonna get lost, but it's pretty easy. So just set your pegs as far apart as you like. So for this, you use this side of the box. It has these all these little pegs. So basically you can make a bow that's that wide you know, this wide, this wide, this wide, however you want. I'll just use these two middle ones because I don't want to waste too much ribbon because I'm not trying to make like the biggest bow. And I would assume you're supposed to put them all the way down. This one's giving me some problem, but that's okay. And I'm just going to cut a piece of ribbon. You can probably leave it on the spool if you wanted, but and I'm just gonna make a simple bow. And basically that's all they're showing you in there how to make anyway. So let me make sure I have enough. I don't know. I don't even know if that's enough ribbon, but you're supposed to go around your two things, um, pegs, and then you're going to crisscross them over. It doesn't matter if you crisscross it this way or this way. Whichever one's on top is the one that you're going to take. Um, you're going to take it under here. Hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm taking it underneath. So this top piece is going to go under here. Right? And you're gonna already pulling it together like a little ribbon and then back over the top because now you're just gonna tie a knot. Okay? That's how quick it is. So whatever piece of ribbon you have on the top is what you're gonna go underneath, bring it over, and then tie your knot. So that's I was gonna I was like, you know what, it's okay, I'll just leave it because I didn't make the video the video, I'll do it next time, but it's so fast and easy. And that's it. And that's actually a pretty perfect little ribbon. I didn't really think it was going to be that dramatic, but look how cute that is. So then cut off your little ends. You can uh, burn it with a um, flame if you want so it doesn't undo, but there it is. All right, guys, now I will go. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.